I'm Lulu, and welcome to Judson Sunday Arts, where kids of all ages can make art that matters. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and for those of you who are joining us with low vision, I am a white 34-year-old woman with very short, buzz-cut, dark blonde hair. I'm wearing a light pink blouse that has ruffles on the neck and little tiny black spots. There is a big bookcase behind me with books and other things on it and artwork on the walls. Today, we are going to write monologues in the role of someone or something else about the climate crisis. You will need something to write on and something to write with. That could be a pen and paper, or it could be a digital device, whatever works for you. If you tuned into Andy's lesson on March 14th, you'll remember a lesson about Greta Thunberg, responsibility, and climate change. Greta is an inspiration for people around the world because she is young, she is neurodiverse and proud that she has autism, and because she has tirelessly committed herself to ending the climate crisis. There are many people with and without physical and intellectual disabilities, young and old, and of all races and nationalities leading the fight against the climate crisis and for environmental justice. Today, we're going to hear a poem called Two Degrees by a woman named Kathy Jetniel Kitchener. Kathy is from the Marshall Islands, which is a very remote set of islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Because of the rising sea level due to climate change, the islands are disappearing. There are maps next to me that show where the Marshall Islands are, and a photograph that shows water surrounding a cluster of homes on the Marshall Islands. In the video clip, Kathy is speaking her poem outside the United Nations Climate Summit in 2016. She is a light brown skinned woman with black hair that is pulled back. She wears brown glasses and a white pattern button down shirt under a gray blazer. While you listen to the poem, you can make note of any images that come to mind when she speaks or words or phrases that stand out. Let's hear it. My name is Kathy Jedengun Kitchener. I'm from the Marshall Islands, and I'm about to perform my piece, uh, my poem, called Two Degrees. The other night, my one-year-old was a fever pressed against my chest. Together, we wrestled with a thermometer that read 99.8 degrees. The doctor says technically 100.4 is a fever, but I can see her flushed face how she drapes across my lap listless. Libanum is usually a wobbly walking toddler, all chunks and duck-footed shaky knees, stomping squeaky yellow light-up shoes across the edge of the reef. And I think what a difference a few degrees can make. Scientists say if humans warm the world more than two, than two degrees, then catastrophe will hit. Imagine North American wildfires increasing by 400 percent, freshwater declining by 30 percent, animal extinction rising by 20 percent, thousands, millions left wandering, wondering what happened. At a climate change conference, a colleague tells me two degrees is just a benchmark for climate negotiations. I tell him two degrees is a gamble. At two degrees, my islands, the Marshall Islands, is already underwater. This is why our leaders push for 1.5. Seems small, like 0.5 degrees shouldn't matter. Like 0.5 degrees are just crumbs. Like the Marshall Islands must look on a map, just crumbs you dust off the table, wipe your hands clean of. Today, Libanum is feeling better. She bobs around our backyard, drops pebbles and leaves into a plastic bucket before emptying them out and dropping them in again. As I watch her, I think about futility. I think about the world making the same mistakes again and again since the Industrial Revolution, since 1977 when a scientist said two degrees was just an estimate. On Kale Island, the tides were underestimated. Patients sleeping in a clinic with a nuclear history threaded into their bloodlines woke to a wild water world, a rushing rapid of salt, a sewage of syringe and gauze. Later, they wheeled their hospital beds out, left them resting in the sun. They must be stained, rusted, our people creaking brackish from salt spray and nuclear radiation blasts, so, so tired. Wandering, wondering if the world will leave us out to dry in the sun, will they dust their hands of us? wipe them clean. My father tells me that Irik, the Marshallese word for when the tide is nearest in equilibrium, is the best time for fishing. Maybe that's what I'm doing, fishing for recognition, writing the world, willing the world to find its balance. 
so that people remember that beyond the discussions, beyond the policy, the statistics, there are faces all the way out here. There is a baby stomping squeaky yellow light-up shoes across the edge of a reef, not yet underwater. Snaps, ASL applause, applause, yes. Love this poem. What phrases and words stood out in this poem? What images came to mind? How many different times does Kathy mention water? She talks about her daughter in the water at the beach. She talks about a hospital flooding with seawater. I love this poem because the images Kathy describes are crystal clear and because of how personal the story is to her and to her young child. I could go on and on about how much I love this poem, but now it is art making time. Today we're going to write monologues from someone or something's point of view that is affected by the rising tides that Kathy talks about in her poem, Two Degrees. A monologue is when one person in a play or movie speaks for a long amount of time. Long in this case could be one minute or the length of an entire one person play. To write your monologue, first think about who your character will be. Will your character be a person who lives near the water? A tree or bush on the beach? A fish or crab that lives in a reef? Think about the details of their life. Does the person, animal, or thing have a family? How old are they? What do they think about the world that is changing because of the climate crisis? In acting, we call these details given circumstances. Think about who or what your character is talking to. Are they talking to a friend, a family member, an enemy? Talking directly to the audience? Are we hearing their thoughts? What does your character want? What are they afraid of? What do they hope for? Write a monologue from your character's point of view that tells your character's hopes and fears about climate change. If you're feeling especially brave, Read it out loud or perform it for someone you trust. You could spend five minutes or a whole week writing your monologue. If you love what you made, send it to me so I can feature it on another edition of Judson Sunday Arts. Be safe, wear your masks, happy playmaking, and happy Women's History Month, friends. See ya.